My name is the Reverend Rock and Rollin. I'm the founder, pastor, spiritual advisor of the Church of Elvis and even more Latter-day Saints. I welcome you back to my channel. I was going to combine two topics into one video, and one of them is an old man itch, scratch, get off my lawn. It doesn't deserve to be part of what I'm about to talk about. So I'm going to do two videos. I'm going to try to do two vi videos tonight. You're blessed. Now. I was listening to some ambient music last night and I got, I saw Mazzy's video that I think he did in the morning, I saw in the evening when I was just finished listening to some ambient music. And I wanted to share that. Now, if you listen and watched my channel, like most Americans, okay, goal 36,000 followers in a month. I love to listen to ambient music when the seasons are changing, when the season starts, and I love that magic in between two seasons. Now, particularly down here in the South, let me tell you right now, summer is kicking spring's ass. Summer is winning the battle, okay? It's undefeated. The air is getting thick and heavier and warmer and getting those pop-up thunderstorms. And let me tell you, during that magic spot, the in-between things get very unstable in the atmosphere, very unstable, and you can get dangerous weather. And I love those weather events because it allows you to know that the environment's part of you. The weather is part of your life. And I love to pick ambient music that matches that weather, not my mood. I want to match the weather. And it is an exercise of getting out of yourself, to be part of something that is external, okay? And then it might even change your mood. You might not even want to change your mood, but it's fun to just change your mood with music, but matching it externally. And when it gets hot and it starts getting humid, I love to pick this record, man. Fourth World, Volume One, Possible Music, John Hassel, Brian Eno. It's a 1980 promo copy, sounds, Fantastic. This cover, I love it. It's one of my favorite covers of all time. This pink and turquoise, a little bit of yellows and browns and so forth. This is the, I believe, White Nile in Sudan. The White Nile and the Blue Nile feed the Nile. This area is a massive exchange of culture and ideas and influences upon each other throughout history, ancient and modern. John Hassel, if you don't know him, is an experimentalist trumpeter. He passed away last year, RIP. He's incredible. He's absolutely incredible. And in fact, this album's a little controversial because in interviews in the past, he would say that it's more of a Brian Eno produced album. Now, this is a John Hassel album. But having Brian Eno on your record in 1980 sold records, and he needed to pay the rent because this dude was an academic. This guy was an experimentalist wasn't making a lot of money. He was dedicated to this form that he called the fourth world. And fourth world to him was combining modern music, modern technology. He used a lot of, he was influenced greatly in Miles Davis on a lot of levels, but one of them is augmenting his trumpet with electronics, phasers, um, all different types of things. He's an incredible, incredible mind. And combining that where he studied Eastern influences, India and Africa, particularly the Horn of Africa and other areas. But he did it in a subtle way. And this album, this ambient album feels warm. It feels like a fever rising. Now, he, this album was hugely influential on people like Peter Gabriel, for better or worse, who didn't use the world music so subtly it was massively influential, just John Hassel himself on Eno and David Byrne, to the point where he thought that they overcooked it and overdid it. He did play on a um, Talking Heads album, Remain in the Light, by the way. But that subtly wasn't just effective, it was respectful in some ways in his mind. And maybe it cost him money, fame, what have you. But he did feel slighted. He did have an argument and fallout with Brian Eno 
but they really were close, so much so throughout life. He became the godfather of two of Eno's kids. I also think beyond the, the heady academic descriptions of his music and what he called, there is a physicality that was really, really brilliant because it was like an athlete. When you listen to this album, you listen to some of his stuff, Equinox was an album before this, very good. It physically is difficult. Physically had to be in shape to do what he did. And I know it was probably hard and painful. But even getting past Peter Gabriel and Eno and Byrne, who were not subtle at all, he thought they pushed it too far. The trance and techno scene, I think Orb and some of those great groups, they were obsessed with this. And there's times where you absolutely are thinking you're listening to techno trance way before it happened. And then he started dabbling it in himself. He really, really admired those people, the way they gave them respect because there's ego involved, but the way they did it. And so much he was a part of it sometimes. And they really, really adored this album, those trance guys. So I just want to share John Hassel. Fourth World, Apostle Music, Volume 1. <laughs> so it's a long title. And I just think this is one of the coolest albums in the 80s. And it just was so ahead of its time. And he took pride in that. He took pride in inventing something or being part of something that was novel. And he should have, and he did. And he's greatly missed in the music world. John Hassel, Brian Eno, Possible Worlds, Volume 1. Take care.